We're going to solve this algebraically, but one thing to do before we solve it all algebraically, one thing you can do to think about an equation like this is sort of think about what the graphs look like. If I graph the right side and I graph the left side, first of all, the left side is a line. y equals mx plus b. The y-intercept is 8. The slope is 1 over 1 up 1 it'll look something like this. Now, I'm not hoping to graph it perfectly, but I'm just going to get an idea of what it is. I graph this one in green. I'll graph this one in red. Well, 4x plus 6 is also a line with a positive slope. It would go through 6 right there and have a slope of 4, which is steeper. So it would go up like this. But when it goes down below, because it has an absolute value, it would get flipped up again. So absolute value of lines sort of make these V graphs every time. It looks like we should get two answers for this one. Okay. Now, again, the way that we solve this is we split it up into two sections. Algebraically, we split up one where we assume that the inside is positive, and just take away the absolute values. We also do another one where we assume the inside is negative, and if the inside, which is 4x plus 6, and I'm going to put it in brackets because it's just like what we did with our piecewise functions, if that is a negative number, and the absolute value is going to make it positive. One way to make a negative number positive is to multiply by a negative 1. So all we're going to do is put a negative there. To summarize, this one assumes 4x plus 6 is positive. And this one, that the 4x plus 6 is negative. Because those are our two possibilities. It could be that the 4x plus 6 is negative. It could be that the 4x plus 6 is positive. Now, when I go to solve both of these, get my x's on one side, so I'll subtract x on both sides, subtract 6 on both sides. I'm going to get x is equal to 2 thirds as one of my answers. And on the other one, I'd have x plus 8, distribute the negative, negative 4x minus 6. Get my x's on one side by adding 4x. And I get x is negative 14 over 5. Not nice numbers. Is that what this says at the bottom of the page? good thing. Okay. With absolute values, we always have to verify. That's the part that doesn't make these as much fun. We have to check to make sure that they're right. Especially in this case, because it could be that when you plug this in, that you're going to end up with an error. We saw in the previous examples, that the errors happened when the absolute value of something equaled a negative number. So a short way to verify is if I plug in positive 2 thirds on this side, 2 thirds plus 8, can you see that that's going to be a positive number? So as a short way to verify, I already know that this one's going to work because when I plug it into the left side, I'm going to get 2 thirds plus 8. That's my left side. The proper way to verify is to plug it into both sides. On the other side, you would have 4 times 2 thirds plus 8 in absolute value bars. You would have to simplify that inside. You would get 8 over 3. Is that right? 8 over 3 plus 8? 8 over 3 plus 6. I knew I wrote something wrong. 8 over 3 plus 6. Which, as a mixed fraction, this is 8 and 2 thirds. Maybe you can see that this is 2 and 2 thirds plus 6 and get 8 and 2 thirds that way as well. 
or you could change everything and get a common denominator and write a big improper fraction. If you did that, 8 is 24 over 3, so this side would be 26 over 3, and here 6 is 24, sorry, 6 is 18 over 3, and you would also get 26 over 3 if you used improper fractions. So that's checking it completely. We still have to check the other side, left side, right side. This one has the potential not to work more than the other one, because when I plug in negative 14 over 5 plus 8, it's possible that the left side could be a negative number, and that would be a problem. Oh, by the way, on this last one, on the right side, we had the absolute value bars. I took them away at the moment that I knew that everything inside was positive. So then those absolute value bars won't make a difference. On this one, though, they are going to make a difference because we got 4 times negative 14 over 5 plus 6. So on the right side, I'm going to get the common denominator here. 8 is 40 over 5, so we get positive 26 over 5 as our answer. And on the other side, when we plug it in, 4 times negative 14, I'll keep the absolute value bars. It'll be 40 and 16, negative 56, plus 6. Get a common denominator, negative 56 over 6 plus 36. Over 5, thank you. Over 5, over 5, this will be now 30. And add those together and you get absolute value of negative 26 over 5. And when you do, when you get that single number, that's when you can apply the absolute value. And it works. Again, trusting my mathematics, as soon as I saw that the left side was a positive number, at that point you could assume that it's going to work. But it's... That's a special case with these questions only, so I would say when we have so many different questions where you do have to verify left side and right side, may as well just verify it completely and show all your work. If you try to remember this special case, then you're going to be memorizing too many little details. So solving absolute value equations, we get the two equations, you solve the two equations, and then you verify to see if they're right. The ones that are like number three that you can do in homework, question eight.